you ever been to Disneyland, or some other sort of theme park, and realised with a growing sense of abject horror and dread that you're about to be trapped amongst unending crowds of slack-jawed tourists as they clog up the streets, clawing at one another as they scratch and bite for prime position to see a bunch of people dressed up in frankly terrifying costumes? Well, if so, then you've probably been such a poor schmuck to be subjected to a parade. Well, luckily, today's review has absolutely nothing to do with that sort of parade, and in fact, all of that was just a flimsy framing device I used to start the review off. Parade is a competitive card game for two to six players, based on Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, designed by Naoki Homer and released by Z-Man Games. The game features the denizens of Wonderland cavorting in a zany and madcap parade, where the rules and protocols of who is allowed to be in the parade at any one given time make very little sense. The parade box includes one English rulebook, one French rulebook, six drinks coasters, 66 Alice in Wonderland themed cards and a double-sided tray which is actually used in the game. Sort of. To set up, you give each player five cards. Then set out six cards face up on the table to act as the parade, and set the rest of the cards face down nearby to act as the draw pile. Each turn, a player adds a card to the end of the parade, and depending on certain situations, you then have to take certain cards out of the parade and lay them out in front of you. The goal of the game is to be the person with the lowest score by the end. As you can probably tell, the game is really easy to understand and play. In fact, you can probably teach it to someone else if you know it well enough in about two or three minutes. Its ease of access can be pretty deceptive though. There's quite a lot of depth to the game once you've got used to it, mainly surrounding the scoring system. See, while you're playing, any cards that you've collected are placed face up in front of you with all of the numbers showing. This is important because at the end of the game, your score is based on the numbers of each card. But the person who has the most of any one colour gets to score each card of that colour as a 1 instead of their face up value. This means that sometimes it can be advantageous to take specific cards, resulting in a lower score than you would have had if you had not taken them. One of the most baffling inclusions in the game is this set of 6 coasters that come in the box. It's not the only game that comes with coasters, I'm looking at you Hobbit Tales, but it is pretty strange. It's supposed to be because you're playing as a guest at the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, despite the fact that the game actually centres around a parade and not a tea party. Either way, I don't know anyone who owns the game who uses these as actual coasters. They've got a pretty cool design of the Cheshire Cat on them, and I for one don't really want to ruin them. The coasters aren't the only thing with a cool design on them. Each of the cards features a different character from the story, presented in a slightly twisted and freaky looking way. The art is very in keeping with the themes of Alice in Wonderland, and even the box manages to look pretty cool, even if it is just a design that's the same on the coasters but slightly bigger. Honestly, if I could buy some of this artwork, I would. It would take decent pride of place on our walls as well. Almost as good as that Spider-Man cover I've got. Parade is really easy to pick up, and each game only lasts a short amount of time, so it's perfect if you're looking to kill a little time, or even to get someone you know into tabletop gaming for the first time. Score, six Mercury Adult Hatters out of 10. What do you think, babe? I think you're a dick. Fair enough. <laughs>